Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the largest and fastest 3D printer that I've reviewed. Say hello to the FL Sun S1 Pro, a Delta printer that is so large that it's hard to even fit on camera. And did I mention that it is fast? Up to 1200 millimeters per second print speeds. That is double the max speed of all of my other high-end 3D printers, printing this 3D Benchy in only 8 minutes. So let's take a look at what makes the S1 Pro go burr, test out all of its features, and see what improvements FL Sun made since the original S1. Should the S1 Pro be your next 3D printer? Let's find out. Before we begin, this S1 Pro was provided for me to review by FL Sun. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest experience after using this machine for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, like filament or accessories, you can use those links to help support my channel at no additional cost to you. We appreciate it. Let's get into it. The S1 Pro is FL Sun's top of the line 3D printer. Bear with me, the S1 Pro is so packed full of features it'll take a little to dig into each of them. The S1 Pro is a Delta printer, which uses three arms to suspend the hot end and fancy math to move it around. The modern Clipper firmware makes that math even more fancier and efficient. I'll get into the advantages of a Delta printer soon, but the end result is a printer capable of printing at 1200 millimeters per second, more than twice as fast as many high-end printers. It is certainly the fastest printer that I've tested. This printer is also the largest and heaviest printer that I've tested. Weighing in at 41 kilograms, or 90 pounds, you'll need some help moving this printer around. It's also incredibly tall at over 1 meter, or 40 inches tall. Due to how the arms have to move, Delta printers have a conical print volume, essentially a cylinder up to a certain point, then tapers into a cone up to the max print height. The S1 Pro is a large format printer with a base diameter of 320 millimeters and a max height of 430 millimeters. The max cylindrical height is 383 millimeters. That is a rather large print volume. Working with a cylindrical base can take a little while to get used to, but the tall print height can come in very handy. Moving to the hot end, the S1 Pro has a ceramic heated hot end capable of reaching 350 degrees Celsius. Combined with a 0.4mm hardened steel nozzle, the S1 Pro can easily handle normal materials like PLA and PETG, and also capable of printing exotic materials like carbon fiber or glass fiber filaments, polycarbonates, and nylon. On the effector is the dual gear direct drive extruder, which uses 1.75mm filaments. It provides plenty of grip to push the filament while printing at such fast speeds. To keep the effector lightweight, the cooling fan is located at the top of the printer, and a large hose is used to direct the airflow down. The cooling fan does an excellent job at immediately cooling the material, which is necessary when printing at speeds up to 1200 millimeters per second. FL Sun advertises that the hot end and extruder have a max volumetric flow rate of 110 cubic millimeters per second. Running flow rate tests with a handful of different high speed PLAs, I found the hot end started to struggle at around 90 cubic millimeters per second. That is still incredible and means that the machine will be able to hit that 1200 millimeters per second print speeds quite frequently especially when printing thinner layer heights. The 320mm diameter bed has a textured, magnetic, spring steel PEI build plate. This lets you easily remove the print bed, and a quick flex pops your prints right off. I found that the S1 Pro had great bed adhesion. The auto bed leveling and auto nozzle offset made for the perfect first layer every time. I found that prints stayed stuck to the print bed while printing, but were easy to remove afterwards. The S1 Pro has smart zone heating, which splits the heated bed into two zones, an inner and an outer zone. When preheating for a small model, it'll only heat up the inner zone to minimize heating time and energy usage. You can see in these thermal camera shots that only the inner zone is heated. And when you go to print a larger model, then the S1 Pro will know to heat up both zones. Pay no attention to the scrape across the bed. That was entirely user error as I was trying to optimize a speedboat benchy. I don't have footage of it, but I pushed the first layer travel acceleration way too high, and the quick move from the purge line to the center caused the nozzle to dip into the bed. There was no damage to the rest of the printer, however. The S1 Pro is a Delta 3D printer, which has three pillars with separate motors. A belt-driven carriage is attached to the linear bearings on each pillar. Then each carriage has two carbon fiber forearms which link the carriage to the hot end effector. By controlling how the carriage moves up and down, that determines how the hot end can move. Deltas have some unique advantages. Because the motors are stationary, the rest of the carriage and hot end assemblies can be extremely lightweight, allowing for the very fast print speeds. And since there are three motors working to 
together at all times, they can achieve extreme accelerations of up to 40,000 millimeters per second per second. The Delta style also allows for the bed to be stationary, increasing stability of the printed parts. Deltas do have some drawbacks too. All the fancy trigonometry needed for the movement requires more computation power. That used to be an issue back in the old days when printers were running on 8-bit Arduinos, but modern control boards that can run Clipper have more than enough computing power. The delta motion can also mean that the hot end effector can tilt slightly. As we can see by the scrape in my bed, if one of the arms leads or lag the other arms while moving, it can cause the nozzle to drift out of the plane of motion. I only noticed it in the extreme cases, when trying to move at the 40,000 millimeters per second per second. Speaking of drawbacks, the S1 Pro is an incredibly noisy printer. And it's not only the cooling fan, but even the stepper motor drivers are very loud. It's been a number of years since I've heard noisy stepper motors on a printer. It reminds me of the good old days of my TiVo Tornado. FL Sun says the noise is much improved over the original S1, down to an advertised 55 decibels. Well, I don't have experience with the original S1, but standing a couple of feet away, I was recording 68 to 70 decibels with the cooling fan at 100% and the doors open. Closing the doors does help, it reduces it by about 5 decibels to 63 to 65 decibels. And they do include a fan silencer file as part of the sample files which you can print and place over the cooling fan inlet. This further reduces the sound by 1 or 2 more decibels, but the fan pitch increases, so I perceive it to be a little more grating. But 65 decibels is still loud enough that I find it hard to concentrate when in the same room as the printer. You can turn down the cooling fan percentage to make it quieter and more bearable, but then you wouldn't be able to run the printer quite as fast. But then again, with a max print speed of 1200 millimeters per second, you have room to slow things down and still be printing faster than most printers. Moving up to the top of the S1 Pro, we find the filament holder with an integrated dryer. This dryer can heat up to 60 degrees Celsius, has an adjustable timer, and is controlled on the filament tab in the UI. The dryer heats up from the vents at the top and does a decent job of wrapping that heat around the spool for consistent heating. There's also a pouch containing silica desiccant beads which will help keep the spool area dry. That pouch is also heated when the dryer is running, so it'll dry out the silica and keep that desiccant working for a long time. The holder also has an interesting weighing feature where it can give you an estimate on what percentage of filament is remaining. As the weight of the spool changes, it'll update the percentage. The percentage appears to update in increments of 25% on the touchscreen, but in increments of 10% in the FL Sun World app, so that's interesting. It is based on weight, and it assumes 1 kilogram spools. So if you use smaller 500 or 250 gram spools, that percentage will be off. Personally, I'd much rather track all of my filament usage with 3dprintlog.com. You can create a free account today and keep track of all of your past prints, print settings, and filament usage. Much easier. On the front is the 7-inch full-color touchscreen. It is by far one of the best UIs that I've used. It is extremely responsive, neatly organized, and just looks great. There are two USB ports on the front, as well as the power button. The printer can automatically go into sleep mode when a print has finished, and the power button will wake it back up. The power button also acts as an emergency stop button. The S1 Pro has a built-in UPS, or uninterruptible power supply, which will continue to provide power for a very short time if your power goes out. When that happens mid-print, there'll be enough power for the arms to immediately lift the hot end up and out of the way. And when power is restored, the power loss detection kicks in and you can resume the print where it left off. But that UPS means that you can't just flip the power switch off in case of an emergency. The printer will still move. In that case, hold down the power button and it will immediately kill power to the printer for emergencies. The S1 Pro runs on Clipper, a modern firmware packed full of features. It has Wi-Fi connectivity which will allow you to connect to and manage the printer remotely through a web browser. It uses the mainsail UI for Clipper which lets you start and stop prints, upload G-code, browse files, etc. On the main page you can see the real-time view from the S1 Pro's camera. This camera enables real-time monitoring as well as time-lapse functionality. The drawback with a time-lapse is that it can only be activated when starting a print through the touchscreen or the FL Sun World mobile app. You cannot trigger it through Start G-Code or if starting a print through the Clipper web interface. As someone who always wants a time lapse, this is a big drawback, as it means I can't remotely upload and start a print. I have to upload the print, walk over to the printer, and manually start the print with the time lapse enabled. The S1 Pro has 16 gigs of eMMC memory, so plenty of room to store your G-Code files and time lapse videos. And thankfully, it improves on the S1 with the ability to save as many time lapse files as you want. 
However, another big drawback of the time lapse feature is that you cannot browse or download the files remotely. There is no way of accessing them from the web UI. You have to manually connect a USB drive and use a touchscreen to download the time lapse files. Not the best implementation of time lapses that I've seen. However, the resulting videos are great. I love 3D printed time lapses. I could watch them all day. From what I could tell, we don't have full SSH access into the machine, so we don't have full control over installing Clipper plugins or updates. The camera also enables a series of AI-powered tools to detect debris or spaghetti from failed prints. They are off by default and still listed as beta, so they are still working on this feature. From my experience, the spaghetti detection works pretty well. After pausing a print, I would pop off a section of the print and then tell the printer to continue. After about 8 or so layers, there will be enough spaghetti to detect, and the printer would pause with a warning message. From there, you could either resume or cancel the print. Pretty cool. I did have one false positive when printing this dice tower. The first print was a genuine failure. Two parts popped off the print bed, and the spaghetti detection triggered and alerted me. When I reprinted it, a few hours in it gave me another spaghetti warning. However, this time there was no spaghetti. I think it was getting confused by the gyroid infill pattern. I couldn't get the debris detection to work though, even after throwing in parts of failed prints so I'm not entirely sure what it's looking for there. It will be worth seeing how their AI algorithms improve over time. And the list of features for the S1 Pro continues. Filament runout detection? Check. Power loss recovery? Check. Filament clog detection? Check. Auto bed leveling? Check. Input shaping? Check. Pressure advanced? Check. Over the air firmware upgrades? Check. The enclosure also has an air filter with both a HEPA and activated carbon filter. This will help filter the air and reduce particulate from the air, and also help cool down the chamber in case you don't need a heated chamber for printing materials like PLA. The S1 Pro arrives mostly assembled. All I had to do was screw in the glass doors and handles and attach the screen. It was a very quick process, as long as you have someone else to help you lift up this behemoth 90 pound printer. FL Sun also has extensive documentation on their wiki about replacing parts. They break down each component and how to remove and replace them. I want to give them a thumbs up about that, that's great to see. On the software side, you can use any slicer you want, but FL Sun has their own slicer called the FL Sun Slicer 2.0. The original FL Sun Slicer was based on Prusa Slicer, but version 2.0 is based off of Orca Slicer. I had a great experience with the FL Sun Slicer. They had only one base print profile, a speedy 0.2mm layer height profile, but it has many built in filament types that will adjust the print speeds and cooling accordingly. The FL Sun Slicer also remotely connects to the printer, allowing you to upload G code directly to the machine. And the device tab shows you the mainsail UI so you can control your printer remotely. And in good news, 3D Print Log now integrates directly with all Slicer based slicers, including Orca Slicer, Bamboo Studio, Prusa Slicer, and yes, even the FL Sun Slicer. Simply download the Slicer Post Process Uploader and place the file path in the Post Process Scripts section. Then when you save a G-code file, it'll upload all of your print settings, filament usage, and durations over to 3dprintlog.com so you can easily record all of that info. You can find links to all my prints and print settings in the description. Back to the S1 Pro, you can also use the FL Sun World mobile app to control and manage your printer. You can see a live view from the camera, move and preheat the printer, and even start prints and save time lapses to the cloud using their app. I'll have a separate follow-up video diving into the FL Sun World app, so check that out if you're interested in more details. So with all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at how well the S1 Pro prints. All of the filament used in my test were graciously provided by Sunlu. If you are in the market for high quality filament, take a look at Sunlu. They've got a wide range of colors and material types, and are sure to have just the filament you are looking for. Thank you, Sunlu. FL Sun includes a number of sample files on the machine, including this 8-minute Benchy. This thing was fast, and printed perfectly even as a first print. For an 8-minute Benchy, I am impressed. There are some obvious defects, a little waving on the hull, and no text readable on the back. But this 8-minute Benchy is better than many hour-long Benchies that I printed before. The sample dwarf statue is also a great showcase of print speed and quality. The base is perfect, the slopes are smooth and consistent, and as we move up to the more complex shape of the armor and hammer, we can see some extrusion artifacts here and there, but there are no ringing or ghosting artifacts, the input shaping calibration did a great job at eliminating them. And remember, this statue printed in only 3 hours and 30 minutes. The sample lighthouse, snorlax, and flower pot show much of the same. No ringing, extremely fast print speeds, and very high quality. The only noticeable defects is part of the Z-seams showing on the lighthouse top and some drooping on the inside of the lighthouse's lantern room. Running the Kickstarter Autodesk torture test, the S1 Pro gave acceptable results. The default profiles printed in 55 minutes, when it would normally take 2 hours in my other reviews. 
The speed did cause more artifacts though, notably the stringing on the small pillars and a little drooping on the overhangs of the 15 degree slope and the top platform. The Ethel Sun Slicer profile did a much better job than the profiles included in Orca Slicer. They printed in similar times, but the Orca Slicer profile has many more problems. Kudos to FL Sun for tuning these profiles in their slicer so well. These Dice Guardian Dragons show what 0.1mm layer heights can do on the S1 Pro. They printed great, the body of the dragon is smooth. It's only the small features at the very top that show some stringing, as it finished printing the tips of the wings and ears. Enough small parts, this is a big printer, let's start going big. This Captain America bus was printed at 100% scale in just under 4 hours. I love the look of this marble PLA, it's just gorgeous for busts, and I can't find a single defect on this Captain America bust. The flat surface on the sides and back are smooth, there's no ringing around the finer details on the suits, and even the overhang on the chin is perfect. 10 out of 10, no notes. But I said, let's go bigger. This statue of Venus was scaled to 400 millimeters tall and only took eight and a half hours to print. There was one tree support column that failed, which supported her ponytail, but the rest of the print looks incredible. But that's not big enough. This G Create spaceship was printed 428 millimeters tall and was printed in spiral vase mode. And the S1 Pro had no problem with the spiral vase mode. It worked without any hitches or pausing, unlike some other printers. When viewed in raking light, you can see a subtle salmon skin like pattern on some of the flat surfaces. This wasn't noticeable on previous prints, so it's possible this is due to the thin walled nature of the spiral vase mode, or it might be pushing this non-high-speed red PLA a little too hard. But we aren't big enough. This Eiffel Tower model was designed for resin printers, not FDM printers. But when did a design constraint ever stop me? I scaled this up as large as I could go. Sure, it took 16 and a half hours to print, but I am very impressed. Somehow the S1 Pro printed all of the small trusses, and it even printed the guardrails around the main section. It's not a perfect print, but this is the first FDM printer that I've tested that I could even scale this model up enough to be able to print, and have it print successfully. Great work, S1 Pro. The S1 Pro handles other material types as well. This Sunlu Silk TPU printed just fine using the TPU profile in the FL Sun Slicer 2. The top surfaces look great, and there is minimal stringing which is difficult to do with a flexible TPU. If you hold the prints just right in raking light, you can see the subtle salmon skin effect that we saw on the spiral vase mode prints. PETG also works great. This test cube is smooth and consistent, and I've been using PETG to print out tool holders for my Gridfinity setup. This label maker carriage holder has thin walls, and PETG was perfect for printing it. So in conclusion, the Ethel Sun S1 Pro lives up to the hype. Watching it print up to 1200 millimeters per second is amazing to watch. While not substantially different from the original S1, the S1 Pro has many much needed quality of life improvements. However, it's not the printer for everyone. It is incredibly large and heavy, so you'll need a sturdy table with enough space to hold it. And even though FL Sun says the noise has improved, at 65 plus decibels, it is still a very loud printer. But if you have the space for it and don't mind a noisy environment, the S1 Pro can pump out high quality parts at an incredible rate. And the fast speeds mean that you can make use of the large print volume without needing a week per print. The S1 Pro has every feature you could imagine, thanks to the modern Clipper firmware. I was impressed by the default profiles on the latest FL Sun Slicer, and the wireless print management through both the web interface and the FL Sun World app was great. And while I think there are a few improvements I'd like to see in the future, mostly around starting and transferring time-lapse videos, I think the S1 Pro is a premium printing experience. That premium printing experience commands a premium price. The S1 Pro sells for $1,399 US dollars at the time of recording. As always, check the video description for any coupon codes or discounts. That could save you a few bucks. This is an expensive printer, no doubt about it. But when compared to even the top-end Core XY printers on the market, the S1 Pro still has the edge when it comes to print speeds. So if you are looking for the fastest printer on the market and an extremely large print volume, then the S1 Pro is a printer for you. So thank you all for watching my review of the FL Sun S1 Pro 3D printer. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments down below. I've got plenty of upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.